it going? I'm over there in the distance on the right. So I figured today would be a good time to do like a one year review of this 2021 F3 that I have. I've had this thing for a little over a year now, actually about a year and two weeks. So I figured I would go over some of the things that I've noticed with the chair, some things I like about it, some things I don't like about it, and take a close look at it, see what's worn out, see what's breaking, uh, basically just kind of look at the thing a year later and see what I think of it. As you can see here, I'm in some pretty rough gravel right now. And to be honest, this gravel environment right here is basically where I use this chair every day. Now, I would have thought that in this sort of scenario, with all the bumping around and gravel getting caught in the tire tracks and in the fenders and all that stuff, we would have had a lot more wear and problems with this thing. But I'm actually really impressed with how this thing is held up. And one of the most amazing things probably are these tires. I've got 413 miles on this chair now, and these, ch these tires have probably about 50% tread left on them. And I run around in this stuff every day. So I'm actually very impressed. These are the, um, what do they call them? The aggressive tread tires from Permobile. If you look here, you can see the tread on these is, well, aggressive, <laughs> a little bit more than the Primo Power Tracks that a lot of chairs come with stock. And even the rear caster wheels on this thing are a little bit bigger in diameter as well. You may notice that my fenders are still on the rear tires. Somehow those have not broken off. Again, kind of surprised with that. They've got a lot of scratches and things on them. And yes, my chair is very filthy right now. I have to clean this thing about every three days because of the dust and stuff I run around in. But um, yeah, so I'm gonna get this thing cleaned up real quick and we're gonna take a closer look at some things on it. And uh, spoiler alert, I like this chair. It works well. And with the type of abuse I put it through, it's actually holding up. There are a few little squeaks and rattles here. It's stuff I could fix, but there's no like major problems other than the plastics. <laughs> if, if you get color accents on this chair, they do like to fall off, but that's easily rem remediable. What, what, what would the word for that be? Activating thesaurus. That's easily fixable. <laughs> so anyways, I'm gonna get this cleaned up real quick and then we're gonna take a look at a few things. Okay, now for the record here, I've been filming this video all day long. It's been in a couple different locations, but I'm going to repeat myself a lot. And one of the reasons for that is, well, one, this video is like 30 minutes long or something. People skip around through videos and it's entirely possible if you're skipping around that you might get a different takeaway from this video than I intended. So we're kind of jumping around just to kind of mix things up a little bit. And then also to make sure that my thoughts are roughly scattered throughout the whole thing in a way that no matter where you start watching it, everything should make sense. So anyways, one of those YouTube things, you just gotta do things a certain way. And um, basically I, I talk about a lot of things in this video. I really like this chair. I know I keep saying that, but there's always room for improvement. So the stuff I'm talking about that I don't like, things that annoy me or whatever, well, they're not necessarily the end of the world or anything terrible. We just, I feel like there should be a little bit more work put into some of this stuff. This equipment is extremely expensive. There's no reason that a few little things can't get worked out and be made a lot better. Now, obviously nothing's gonna be perfect. Every chair has its, you know, positives and negatives and even the best made thing is still going to have some little annoyances here and there but what i like to do here is be completely impartial and because i use this chair every day i've got a lot of thoughts about it and i would like to share those with you so that every possible angle every little thing that i have noticed you will know about <laughs> I, I just want to put all that out there on the table and you can make your own decisions um some of this stuff like i said not too big of a deal, but things I think you should be aware of. So anyways, um, here you go. Hopefully you enjoy. Okay, so this is one of my gripes right here. I'm cleaning this chair, but we have all these overlapping plastics. So a lot of dirt and stuff gets down inside here 
and it's like, how are you supposed to get to that? There are kind of some Velcro pieces here. Oh, well, there you go. You can see, and there's all the dirt underneath. There's some more Velcro right here, and there's a pin right here, but trying to clean everything, and then because of the Velcro, I can't really get this cleaning cloth down in here. So there's just, I don't know. And I've also got this rattling on this side. I think it's because of the overlapping plastic. If you look right here, we've got a couple pieces of plastic that are basically in contact with each other. Here, at least we have the Velcro that's insulating it. But then over here, these two pieces of plastic are riding on top of each other, which this isn't the end of the world or anything, but the vibrating noise that this was making, I thought I was having an issue with my motors. <laughs> um, I tried to get um, so like an audio clip or a video clip of that sound. It's a little hard to pick up on camera. But um, yeah, anyways, just real quick while I'm cleaning this, this is definitely one of the things that drives me nuts with uh, plastics and trying to keep stuff clean, especially in the rain. If you're running around in like parking lots or whatever, sludge and stuff gets in here and it's just a mess. I am actually going to be modifying this a little bit, uh, not today or necessarily soon, but my plan is to drill a hole. There's like a big metal bracket back here with some Velcro on it. And my plan is to drill a hole here and run a bolt through here somewhere. And then maybe also some sort of uh, tapered head screws in here, or I don't know, I haven't figured it out exactly. But as far as this section right here, um, I'm pretty sure I can get a lot of this rattling and stuff. There, see, that just pops right off. There is Velcro, but like, um, I guess technically industrial hook and loop tape. But anyways, I'm gonna continue cleaning this. Okay, so you know how when you get a new cell phone or something like that and you're being super careful with it and you don't wanna drop it and you're kind of babying the thing? Well, I've operated with what I call the two chair model for quite some time where I have my daily chair that's fitted to me. I use it inside, going grocery shopping, stuff like that. And then everything else when I'm outside working on things and actually doing stuff that might damage my chair, I've got another chair I use for that. Interesting note, see the C300 back here that's piled high with stuff? I have not sat in that chair for over two months now. What I used to do when I was working on the bus and doing things like that, I would hop into that chair because, well, one, it's a little bit more compact, but also I don't, I don't care about hurting that thing or ruining it or whatever, you know? But what I've been finding myself doing is when I'm working on stuff, I just stay in this chair. As I've been using it and realizing that things don't seem to hurt it like I thought they would, like running around in gravel or maneuvering in really strange environments and whatnot, um, I just use this thing 24 seven now, even when I'm working on stuff. Now, there are still, a, flies, <laughs> there are still a few occasions where I will hop into that thing. Like if I need smaller space, getting into a friend's van, you know, with like two other power chairs or I don't know, any number, any number of other scenarios. But let me show you outside here real quick, some of the stuff I do with this. It may not look like much on camera, but uh, I, I still wanna show you the environment out here that I'm running around in with this new chair. I suppose one of the other things too is the C300 can't get around in this gravel with the tires that it has nearly as good as this thing. Now granted, I do still have to be really careful and pick my lines but if I want to back straight up right now, it's really not too much of an issue. I found it's actually pretty hard to get dug into this. And you can see those back caster wheels are flying all over the place, but we're still getting traction. Now, if I have to do something for whatever reason where I need to run at you know high speed or full speed through this gravel, I'll use a C300 for that because you know that is hard on stuff. But uh, here, let me put this in a higher speed profile and I'm just gonna take off full speed straight ahead. No big deal. Um, yeah, these aggressive tread tires, I would have thought that the tread would be all chunked out and ripping apart and stuff on these. Cause I mean, it's a softer tread, right? It gets more grip. I mean, I can just deflect this tread with my finger. But <laughs> somehow, it's holding up. I believe these tires are maybe like a six or $800 option or something like that. I worked it out with my DME so they are able to include this with my chair. 
But um, I, I don't get it. They, they just work extremely well. Um, yeah. And then there's other surfaces like this. This is just basically hard packed dirt. You know, no big deal. There's a little bit of gravel. The ground is pretty uneven though. Um, and it is fairly easy to get stuck out here. But look at this. I'm just like, this is soft bark dust over here that's pretty steep. I can just kind of like go up this, no problem. Um, here, let's turn around and back up this. Be careful not to flip forward. But, I mean, my back tires are coming off the ground. I'm actually gonna tilt forward a little bit because I don't want my foot plates to dig in here. But the traction is just unreal. And I suppose that brings me to another point. The motors on these newer chairs have, I'm just guesstimating, but I would say maybe 20 to 30% more torque over the older 2017 F3 that I had. I'm not sure what year it was they switched over these motors. I think it's been within the last couple of years or something like that. But I thought for sure I was going to need to get a five series chair because when I was still living in the mold barn, that place had carpet and my 2017 F3 did not like carpet. I mean, the motors, I had everything tuned up. I had the torque turned up all the way, but the back casters would bind up and trying to get moving when you're stopped, the thing would just slingshot and it just, it was, a, it was a pain. But this chair in the house when I was still there, it was like the carpet wasn't even there. And I mean, like I said, loose dirt and bark dust. It just, what, what bark dust? What loose dirt? Like, it's just not even a thing. So, um, yeah. Front wheel drive chairs, obviously you gotta be careful about tipping over because you've only got, you know, four wheels. But like, again, I don't wanna sound like I'm knocking on this thing by all the little nitpicky things I've been talking about, but like, I mean, seriously. Okay, so right here, yeah, that's off camera. My left tire is spinning. But if I modulate the throttle just a little bit, oh no, I'm actually stuck there. <laughs> that was a little bit too much for it. Okay, tires are spinning. Oh, oh, still going, okay. <laughs> let me, let me, let me show you that hole we just dug. Okay. Yeah, there it is. See, this is like loose, fluffy dirt. Let me do the same thing again, I'll show you. Now again, this is, these are not the stock tires that come on the F3. By the way, my back tire is off the ground currently. These are not the stock tires that come on the F3. These come on the 5 Series chairs. Permobil will put them on there for you, but you have to order them and maybe pay for them as well. Let's see if we can try and get stuck here. Okay, there we go, we got through it. Look at that. I have noticed as well that the gyroscope, the newer gyroscopes on this chair. Now, this still has the older style gyroscope on it. Uh, Permobile and Arnett have been playing around with a new gyroscope that is actually a gyroscope. Um, they're only putting that on some of the 5 Series chairs. This is the same one that's been on the chairs since back in the late C500s, like the later run of those things. But I don't know what they tuned or changed on it. This thing doesn't get in my way nearly as much. Now granted, I still had to tune it a little bit. When I got this chair originally, I feel like, I don't know if they were expecting the DME to program it or something, but the tune it had on it was unusable in a way that the deceleration was turned almost to zero and the acceleration curve was very violent. So it would just take off and then kind of coast and you couldn't stop without hitting a wall. So I have tuned a few things on it. Um, again, I don't know if that came that way from Permobile or maybe the DME did something, I, I don't know. But everything about this seems to be a significant improvement over the 2017 F3 that I had before. So honestly, like if you've got one from 2016, 2017, somewhere in there, an upgrade to 2021 or newer, it's like a whole different chair. Just to recap though, and make sure it's known, this chair is not completely stock. We've got those aggressive tread tires. I've got the shocks from the C500 on the front with the adjustable rebound and then I've done a little bit of programming. So if you order one of these chairs from the factory, the ride's not gonna be quite as good just because of the shocks and the tires. 
Just the difference between the standard Primo Powertrax tires and the aggressive tread tires makes a huge difference. I don't think there's a reason really to go air-filled tires on these chairs anymore. Um, only Permobile, apparently, sells the aggressive tread tires. Their name's stamped right on them, and I have not been able to find them for sale on any third-party websites. They do seem to last for a while, so I would think you should be able to get more than, you know, three, four, five hundred miles out of a set of them. Typically for me, the Primo Powertrax tires would generally last maybe 350 miles for a set of tires, which for me is about three, four months. Again, I'm pretty hard on chairs, but um, as a whole, the way this thing is set up, um, highly recommend. Oh, also one thing I have noticed is the amount of play on the motors. Well, it's not super bad. It has gotten a little bit worse over the life of the chair. Um, this still isn't really in a zone where it's too big of a deal. I mean, it's nothing like my old forefront Quantum was, but uh, just one thing to note, after 400 miles, the um, it's not the hub assembly. They completely redesigned this thing. This, this part is solid, but I think it's in the brake mechanism. Yeah. Once again, I'm not worried about the brakes not holding or anything, but um, they probably wouldn't hurt at some point to pop that cover off and take a look in there and see what's actually worn. But um, once again, the abuse that I deal out to this thing, I am not surprised at all um, <laughs> that we're, we've got a few little things like that. Anyways, I don't think they're gonna break, but um, just something I noticed, I guess is all I'm trying to say. So I had been getting some weird noises on this chair. I wasn't quite sure where they were coming from, but I just noticed something as I was cleaning this earlier. These transport brackets are actually rubbing on these trailing arms. If you look real close, you can see we've got some wear going on here. Now I had been getting a bit of a squeaking noise on this thing, and I'm wondering if that was it. These are a plastic cover, and well, it's like that on both sides. You can see on this side, it's actually digging into the plastic quite a bit there. This is something I think I might be able to fix though. Um, and none of my mods or anything I've done to this chair would affect this. This is straight out of the factory no matter how you get this chair configured. I think I can take off these arms. I have to pull the arms off and then I think I can take off these plastic covers and then maybe um, maybe use a you know, things already getting dirty. But maybe use a die grinder or a knife or something to cut a notch, like a clearance notch in these plastics. Because this rear suspension here does go up and down a little bit. I still have the stock shocks on the back of this thing. But um, yeah, I just noticed that while I was cleaning this thing earlier. So yeah, a few little things here and there that are just kind of like, uh, was that an afterthought or are we just not thinking about it? Or did we just jam it together and say, ah, who cares? Or not even notice, I mean, so many options. As I'm down here cleaning this thing, I just keep noticing a bunch of stuff. Like for example, these lights right here, these interfere with the fender. Like if you hit bumps or whatever, and also trying to clean underneath them is a little bit tricky. I think these can be adjusted or maybe the bracket bent or something, but you see there's just not, not a whole lot of clearance there. Now, obviously I have been using this chair quite a bit. We've got a lot of scratches on it. We've got some right here. That was actually from me getting too close to one of the seats in the bus. And then back here, uh, these fender, caster fender things have gotten rubbed on a lot of stuff. Yeah, and our single um, caster swivel bars here, obviously got some marks on these from running up against stuff. Same over here. This one was kind of a doozy. This is actually deep. <laughs> this cut a groove through the coating and into the aluminum. I actually had to get my file out and get uh, take down the sharp edge that was on there. But again, that's completely my fault. I just don't want it to look like I'm not using this chair at all. I think these 400 miles I put on it are probably equivalent to at least a thousand miles of what a typical person that is indoor most of the time would have uh, had the same amount of wear. Um, 
if that makes any sense. I don't know. Anyways, I got the thing pretty well cleaned up now. I'm gonna hop back in it and then uh, find some more stuff to talk about. Yay, it's a chair. I see when it's cleaned up, it actually looks nice. Um, oh, missed a spot. Which leads me to my next thought, and that is about the transport brackets on the chair. So the front ones are right here. Now, if you get on a transit bus, and actually here, let's put this thing back into a normal seating position. Okay, so as this thing is moving back into its normal position, if you get onto a transit bus and they need to tie you down, your foot plates are gonna be something like this, your legs are gonna be here, the lights are here. How on earth do you expect a transit driver to get a giant hook through this area and back onto this? without damaging something or hitting the lights or any number of other things. Uh, that just seems like an unnecessary point to put these. I mean, couldn't we have stuck a bracket out here so they're like sticking out here or something? And then I think the worst part is probably the rear ones. They're tucked way back up in here. And same thing, if your caster wheels are pointed like this or whatever, because you're maneuvering into a tight space on a bus, how are you supposed to get a hook in there? And then also, it's partially obscured by this stuff here. And, and same thing here. This plastic, when you put a hook on here and they try to pull this off, this thing is just gonna come right off. So again, little things, not a huge problem, but like when you've got a piece of equipment that is this expensive, can't we just take a few more minutes or a couple more months or whatever <laughs> to design things that are usable in the real world? I mean, I don't know if a lot of manufacturers get input from wheelchair users. Now, it makes sense, I understand, the frame of the chair is here, so this is the strongest spot to put that. But how do you get to it without damaging the chair? And also, you know, if your tight arm hook is coming from over here and they run it across, it's gonna put a bunch of pressure on this rear cover and this thing can get ripped off pretty easily. So, yeah, I, once again, things I'm noticing. So I filmed several parts of this video a couple of times because of lighting and stuff, but here's the C500 shocks on here. I do have a video about that. I will link that up above and down below where we swapped these in here and they work really well. And as you can see, the cutout for this rebound control was already on the chair. It's almost like they were thinking about using these shocks. The rear ones are still stock. I did adjust the ride height down quite a bit. So I suppose in theory that could have affected this clearance. Oh, actually no. That's the same thickness all the way around. Well, anyways. So if you're gonna get one of these chairs, highly recommend the aggressive tread permobile tires. See, it says permobile. And highly recommend the C500 shocks. These bolt right in without too much fuss. Again, I got the video linked on how to do this. And then there is a link below that video that takes you to the website to make sure you buy these properly. Because people that sell these on eBay, sometimes they're missing some parts and it can affect your ability to install these. Okay, now these rear tires look like they're worn down, but they're actually not worn that much. I'll put a picture here on the screen of what they look like when they're brand new from the factory. Um, but these were holding up really well. There's maybe a tiny bit less tread than there was, but to my eye, they look pretty similar. And again, there's no huge chunks taken out of these. Oh, there is, there's a chunk. Okay, there's the proof. Can you see that? Yeah, right here, we got a piece of rubber missing. So you can see that I am in fact using this chair and being pretty hard on it. Man, see, look. I. I we just cleaned this like an hour ago. I'm back at the bus now, and we've already got dust on this again. Um, anyways, whatever. Okay, so let's go back to me in the past, and I've got a few more things that I was talking about on this, and we'll look at a few other, other little details. <laughs> My one main complaint with this chair, which from the beginning when I first got it, and throughout this whole year, is the plastics. The, the little color accents and stuff that they have on the back of this chair and around the sides and whatnot, they literally fell off in the first hour that I got the chair. Actually, the one that's probably the worst out of all of them is this one right here. It just basically goes through some little rubber grommets. It isn't held on very well at all. I wound up actually scuffing up the surface underneath here and using some of the black hot glue to hold this on. I thought about using uh, some other pins or something, but that's actually been working pretty well. 
These ones here on the back are kind of similar, but I haven't had these fall off on their own yet. If you look real close here, you can see the little pin and grommet style thing that they use to hold this on. Um, these back ones have been okay, but um, yeah. Oh, and that's the other thing too. So I don't know if it's because I've got these traction tires on here or the aggressive tread tires or not, but these rear fenders interfere with this rear case, as you can see here and right here. These do appear to be adjustable, but I think in my case, since I've got these bigger tires on here, they're adjusted so that there's clearance. And if I tried to adjust them down anymore so they weren't close, I think they would catch on the tire. If you look here, you can see there's not a whole lot of space in there. It looks like there's a lot right here, but since these are a little bit wider, you can see how close it is. So this isn't necessarily a huge problem, but it's just one of the things I've noticed. And then I've also made another video about repairing this front plastic cover right here. This thing broke eh, probably about two months after I got the chair. When you raise the leg rest up, this bar comes up and it kind of pulls this thing out. But it basically keeps your legs from getting pinched in this mechanism and covers up these bolts and stuff here. But the little plastic clips on these um, uh, break off super easy. Uh, I will link the video up above uh, how I fix that. As you can see here, we've got a couple of holes and I use some zip ties to attach that to the mounting bar underneath. And I did that probably two months ago or something like that. But as you can see, it uh, seems to be holding up and working fairly well. But once again, plastics, um, yeah. Now this leg rest wobble, this, this is a permobile thing and I actually don't mind that at all. A lot of times I'll push doors open with my feet because my shoes kind of hang off the front of this. And I found with other chairs, uh, particularly Amy Systems, this leg rest assembly would just bend in a slight breeze or if you brush up against a wall or try to push a door open or something like that. So I kind of like the idea that these give a little bit and move around. When you're sexual, when you're, when you're actually sitting in the chair and the weight of your legs are on there, they don't move around that much. But if it was completely rigid and you bumped into something, stuff would potentially break or bend. So that doesn't really bug me very much. So what is the takeaway from all this? Should you get a 2021 or newer Permobile F3? Well, I really like the chair. And like I said at the beginning, there is not another brand or another model that I know of yet that I've tried <laughs> that I would want more than this chair. This thing works really well for me. I've got the wraparound backrest on it. We use the direct backrest adapter to get an ADI deep curve tall back on it. I put some different shocks on it. We got the factory option traction tires and uh, I haven't done a range test on this thing yet, but I feel like I should be able to get maybe 14 or 15 miles. Um, I'm planning on doing that at some point to see what the range actually will be. But if you use a chair, you realize there's a lot of logistics to running a chair close to dead and being able to not get stuck somewhere. So anyways, I like the chair. I highly recommend it. Um, uh, for general indoor use, a little bit of outdoor use. I mean, granted, there's better off-road chairs out there and there's chairs that are probably a little more compact, but out of everything I've owned, the F3 seems like a great option and I wouldn't use anything else. <laughs> so anyways, there you go. Um, not the Permobile fanboy you thought I was. Did you see all that stuff I pointed out that I don't like? <laughs> anyways, um, so hopefully this is helpful to you guys. Let me know if you have any comments or thoughts or suggestions down below. If you've got one of these chairs. Um, oh, one other thing I wanted to mention. If you have an older Permobile, like 2016, 2017, maybe 2018, and you get replacement motors for it, they're gonna be putting these newer motors on the chair. And one very important thing that you need to bring up to your DME or whoever installs the motors, they have to adjust the motor ohm compensation or the motor compensation setting in the software. These new motors are slightly different. The windings have a slightly different resistance and the torque is a little bit different. So if your chair's fine the way it is and they slam these new motors on there, it's gonna be a little bit jumpy and might be a little bit hard to control. So if you're getting new motors on your chair that is more than two years old, this is 2022 by the way, and if your chair is older than like 
2018, 2019, and you're getting new motors put on it now, make sure you check into that because it is a thing that can potentially cause an issue. Now there are manufacturing tolerances and each set of motors is gonna be slightly different, but that setting should be adjusted when the motors are replaced on an older chair. So anyways, um, yeah, we're gonna call that good. Uh, got my little video lights out here because it's getting dark outside. Um, thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in a few days.